Welcome to Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen, a bi-monthly podcast designed to teach the searchers, seekers, and spiritually curious the basics of metaphysics and new thought. They are all about the basics, but they are not basic bitches. Now, here are your hosts, April Dali and Jen Merkel. Hey everyone, welcome to Spiritual Basics Podcast. My name is Jen Merkel. I am a transformational life coach and a certified hypnosis practitioner. And I am April Darley, and I'm an emotional strength and confidence coach. So, hey, April, how are you doing? I'm doing really well yourself. <laughs> good. You know, it's, it's a good time. We're just, I know we're both really busy with our businesses and um, tell me what you've got going on right now. I just created a freebie. So as many of you know, as an emotional freebie. strength and confidence coach, right? I'm all about the empaths and the sensitive people. Anybody out there who's got stress, anxiety, low confidence, I am the person for you. The holidays tend to bring out anger, fear, stress, and lots of anxiety. What? Really? Oh, I know. Shocker. I know. Newsflash. <laughs> You're hearing it for the first time today on this show, folks. The holidays <laughs> cause stress. Right. So I created a freebie for everyone and it's called Hassle-Free Holidays for Empaths, Five Secrets to Tackle Any Holiday Challenge and Stay Emotionally Healthy. Wow. Who so doesn't need that? I know, right? So if you want to head over to my website, apraldarley.com forward slash hassle free, you can download that freebie and stay emotionally healthy the entire holiday season. That would be really nice. <laughs> How about you? What's going on in your world? Yeah. So what I've been working on, uh, I've been on a lot of things. Oh my gosh. I've been putting together some meditations that I'm going to be posting on my YouTube channel, which I'm really excited about. But one thing I'm super excited about that I have, I'm working on planning for uh, launching in January of 2021. Uh, three-part workshop. It's called Get a Healthy Mindset for a Healthy Lifestyle. And it's a whole bunch of things in one. So it's about um, transforming yourself. Like this is a time when you set new goals to have a healthier lifestyle, maybe lose some weight or maybe gain some weight, get more motivation for exercise, those kind of things. It's all going to be wrapped into it. There's going to be a lot of tips and the presentation, an actual workshop, but we'll also be doing group hypnosis. And those recordings will be available to listen to for people who join as well. So um, it's really cool. It's going to be, again, three sessions. Even if you can't make it, the recordings will be available for anybody who joins. And uh, I'm super excited about it. So if you want more information on that, go ahead and head to my website, which is jenmerkelhypnosis.com. Click on the events uh, page. You will see information about that there. Registration is going to be opening soon. It may be open by the time this podcast drops, but in case it isn't, um, if you sign up to receive notifications about it, then you receive $40 off registration. Ooh. which will be quite a chunk because I'm trying to make it affordable for everybody. I want something that everybody has access to and will help people. So that's what I've been working on. So. That's right. Check her out. So, Hey, before we start on talking about the moon phases, I do want to mention a little something about YouTube. They have recently changed their terms of service. So those of you who listen to us on YouTube, I know there are quite a few of you, this is going to affect you. So what they're doing now is they have decided to run ads on those creators, as they call us, who aren't monetized. So we're not part of the partnership program. And quite honestly, we don't qualify for it because we don't have enough followers yet or enough uh, listening hours or watching hours. But you might hear an ad in the middle of our podcast right now. And, you know, we don't like that. We don't, you know, we prefer not to be monetized and we actually, we don't get any money out of it anyway. It's YouTube getting all of that. But the reason why it's important to me is because the work that I do with the hypnosis, I do, I put all my recordings for hypnosis on YouTube. So I have to now figure out what else to do. Because if, if you do a session with me one-on-one -on -one and I do a recording and I put that up on YouTube and your homework is to listen to it every day, you don't want to be 10 minutes into a hypnosis session in the middle of hypnosis. And all of a sudden you hear an ad for like an exterminator or something, right? <laughs> like that is totally, you know, that's horrible. So I have to figure something else out now because I can't 
do that. And I don't know whether they are going to do them in stream like that, or if they're just going to do them beforehand. I'm not really sure, but I don't really want to take any chances because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to mess up any of my client stuff, but it's really upsetting to me because now it's like, well, how do I get to that point? So I don't really know, but, um, kind of sucks. <laughs> well, those are some good questions for the creators of YouTube. Our spiritual basics podcast website is on WordPress and we do pay a nominal fee to keep it ad free so that our listeners that go and look at our website don't have to see pop up ads or banner ads or anything like that. So we do pay a little bit for that. I wouldn't mind doing that for YouTube. I would totally do that to keep ads off of my YouTube channel. But as far as I know, that's not an option. I haven't seen anywhere that they're considering that to be an option. You can subscribe as a listener or as a watcher. You can subscribe to the YouTube Red and get your experience ad free. That you can do, but that's nothing I can do about it if you're watching my stuff. It might be like eventually like the airlines. You know, we used to get free check bags and free pretzels and all this stuff. And yeah. now it's like, we have to pay for all these little upgrades. Right. Yeah. So maybe YouTube is going to the way of the airlines where maybe you'll just end up paying for those upgrades. Yeah. Well, th I think about it's very similar what Spotify does, right? So you can have a Spotify account for free. You just have to tolerate ads. Personally, I do spend that whatever it is, 11 or 12 bucks a month to get my Spotify experience ad free. So it's basically the same thing that they're doing. And if you really want to make sure that you're doing our content, sign up for our individual email lists. That way you're getting all the news in case those platforms explode tomorrow, right? Yeah. We want to stay connected with you. So uh, I know Jen has one at jenmerkelhypnosis.com. I've got one at apraldarley.com. And we would just love to have you as part of our inner circle so that we're, we never miss you. Yeah. And you know, there's so much we cover, both of us cover on mm -hmm. that you know, we both have a wellness blog and we both have newsletters that have lots of wellness tips and all kinds of other stuff that we don't cover here. So, you know, we're so much more, even though we, are. we love doing this, it's only part of what we do. Right. Absolutely. So, Hey, let's get on to business enough, you know, hawking our wares for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a fun show tonight. This week, we are talking all about the moon and oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I think we have a lot of really great information to share with y'all and some really cool things we're going to be talking about. You may find a couple of resources really interesting for tonight's show. And if you are a moon person, then you're going to love this book. It's called Moonology by Yasmin Boland. This is going to give you everything you need to know about how to work with the moon. So Yasmin Boland is an astrologer, but she's made a specialty of the moon. And you're going to find astrological, cor astrological correspondences. You're going to find phases, what you can do for those phases. And it's your handbook for everything to do with the moon. Now, I've just recently purchased a 2021 magical planner that has a lot of moon phases and that's going to help me in the coming year and in our previous episode all about the zodiac episode 14 we talked about how each zodiac sign is grouped into one of the elements and jen and i are going to be covering that in a special bonus episode about how you can uh, sync up your productivity with moon and element cycles so that's going to drop december 31st be on the lookout for that now, getting into the moon. So humans are cyclical creatures and especially women. So we are affected by the moon. So for example, a woman's menstrual cycle is often considered to be 28 days, similar to a moon cycle from dark moon to full moon. You can track your moods and plan your activities based on the elements and phases and signs that the moon is currently going through. So check out our bonus episode it's dropping shortly on that. You know, also there was a study done actually in 2014, uh, there, they took into account more than 8,000 women and they found that they were more likely to ovulate during the new moon. So that's pretty crazy. The cycle stuff is really interesting. And as I was doing research for this, I found that you can have two different cycle types. So if you are a woman who bleeds at the new moon, that means you're going to ovulate at the full moon. And this is cycle is referred to as a white cycle. And this cycle allegedly is optimal for fertility because the cycle tends to be associated with a personality type that is nurturing, motherly, fertility, 
and caring. So if you have this kind of cycle where you're bleeding at the new moon, you may be focused on the needs of other people more so than yourself. So you do want to be aware of that to keep your giving and receiving in balance so that you don't neglect yourself and your own needs. The opposite cycle, so bleeding at the full moon or ovulating at the new moon is considered to be a red cycle. And this is associated with bringing your shadow elements to the surface to be healed. And Jen and I are all about shadow work. We totally love it. You got to bring the yucky stuff up so you can let it go. These, those people that were engaged in healing activities. So we're talking shamans, priestesses, they have, they might find that this cycle is a bit more common for them. So this is a cycle of self-discovery, intuition, and healing. And if you were a midwife or an herbalist or a healing woman, then you may find your cycle syncing up more for this. But if you are ready to be a mom and embrace those motherly type qualities or the mother archetype, you may find the opposite cycle. You're a bee on a white cycle. So it's very interesting. And throughout our lives, we're going to flip flop between these cycles, Hmm. just based on where we are in our lives. It's fascinating. So let's talk about moon symbolism for a minute, because we can't let an episode go by without talking about symbolism like tarot or this would actually work with astrology anywhere you see the moon anywhere the moon symbolizes things like feminine energy intuition and imagination also illusion hidden things and secrets Um, it's about uncertainty confusion lack of clarity uh, deception and misunderstanding so things that aren't as they may appear Um, It can also signify darkness in the occult. And something interesting, if you look at the tarot card of the moon, you will see that there are two similar looking towers in the background. Those signify good and evil. And it's on the card because it's showing the difficulty we often have recognizing the difference between the two. If you look in the water of that card, um, if you're using typical rider weight imagery, you'll see uh, different animals under the surface of the yes. water than what's looking at the top. So it also is that sign that things are not as they appear. Things right. are hidden. You need to look a little closer and trust your intuition. Yeah. The moon is mysterious and magical. And that's Indeed. why we picked it as the star for our episode. Uh, So let's talk for a minute. We're going to go through moon phases in a minute, but before we talk about each individual phase, let's talk about the phenomenon, sorry, the phenomena of eclipses. (laughs) Phenomena is plural, right? Yeah. So because there are two different types of eclipses, but there are about four to seven eclipses every calendar year, and there are usually two eclipse seasons. And What that means is when there are multiple eclipses, I think it's three eclipses in a row or something like that. Um, We are actually when at the time of this episode airing, we're, we will be in the middle of one right now with the previous lunar eclipse on November 30th and the next full solar eclipse occurring on December 14th. Your eclipses tend to happen around June, July, and then November, December. So those are eclipse season. If you're tracking that on a yearly basis. So eclipses, there are about change and evolution. During an eclipse, you will find intensified spiritual activity. You might find that there are sudden natural disasters. They're more likely to happen like earthquakes and floods and things like that. They do affect us all energetically, but the more visible an eclipse is to where you are in your physical location, the more you're going to be affected by its energy. So in other words, if you can physically see the eclipse, it's going to affect you more than those times where it's in another part of the world and it's not visible to you. Here's a resource for you. There's a website called timeanddate.com and that's all spelled out. There's a map of viewable locations for each eclipse and also a whole ton of other great info about sun and moon phases and all kinds of things like that. So eclipses are extra magical and powerful. And they also have the nickname, the scissors of fate. So eclipses tend to eclipse out something in your life or cut out something. And eclipses often serve to push you back onto the pate, the path of destiny. So if you've gotten off your path, if you've strayed too far from the path, as it were, 
eclipses will cut out these distractions that could be people, jobs, places, situations. It'll cut those things out. They'll fall away, almost like the tower card in the tarot. So it's going to fall away and it pushes you back on your destined path again. So the scissors of fate. Cool. Gosh, April, you're just a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> a fountain of useless information. <laughs> no, you're a cult information. Super I'm useful. Girl. It's useful for the podcast. So <laughs> useful for our listeners. Uh, so let's talk about the different types of eclipses. There are two different types. One is a lunar eclipse. The last lunar eclipse was on November 30th. So it just happened. Uh, the next one will be in May on actually specifically May 26th of 2021. And it will be visible in Texas. And also this is during a super full moon. So, and by the way, uh, lunar eclipses always happen during a full moon, but the super moon, what that means is it's closest to the earth. There's a time when the moon is closest to the earth. So it appears bigger. So it's going to be something super magical. What a lunar eclipse is, is when the moon and the sun are on exact opposite sides of the earth. So that means the earth is blocking the sun from illuminating the moon. In other words, the moon is in the Earth's shadow. It appears that we're able to view the moon's dark side, though it's really the same side we always see. It's just that it's dark because the sun isn't shining on it. Lunar eclipses are about cycles that have run their course and a time we need to release things which no longer serve us, like April was just saying. So this could mean emotions, relationships, uh, fears, beliefs, any ideas that are no longer serving us. It's a really good time to do a release ritual. And one idea uh, for that is you might do something simple, like taking pieces of paper, writing things you need to release on them, and then burning them. That's a very simple release ritual. Also, lunar eclipses have feminine energy. So they are about emotions, your physical body and intuition. Our shadow side is revealed just similar to the moon, how this shadowed the part. That's the part that we don't typically like about ourselves, the part that we don't want to show to others. So again, it's a really good time for release and transformative work. It's a time that can bring deep and sudden changes, but it's also a time to really trust what's unfolding. Because if you think about it, it's like the tower card in Tarot, nobody really wants the tower card because what that means is the universe is going to, you know, shake up your foundation and make some stuff happen that you might not want to happen, but it's really for your best and highest good. It's because you've kind of been straying from that path. And it's time to bring things back on course. So that's what a lunar eclipse is all about. And lunar eclipses are best to do any emotional healing or release work. So the universe is providing extra support for you during this time. And it's, if you cannot grieve what has fallen away and just stay in that mindset, it's for your best and highest good. That's going to be so helpful to getting you through these changes, this yeah. eclipse of these tower, these tower times in your life. It's a great time to do hypnotherapy or subconscious work, trying to find these subconscious triggers or shadow work. So what's hidden in your subconscious is more readily able to come to the surface during this lunar eclipse time, improving your psychic gifts. And if you think about that, even the tarot card, the moon, it's all about your intuition yep. and your psychic development. So eclipses are a great time to do that and spiritual growth. So pay attention to any signs the universe is sending you and ask for those signs as well. And along with that shadow work, doing self-care and self-love practices are really great to put you first without guilt during eclipse time. So that's what a lunar eclipse is all about. Now let's talk for a minute about the solar eclipse. The next total solar eclipse is actually in just a couple days on December 14th of 2020. And it's unfortunately only going to be viewable in South America. <laughs> so if you're <laughs> listening to us in South America, yay, hey. we're so glad to have you and good luck to you with that, you know, viewing that solar eclipse, so it's not technically viewing it, but it's <laughs> anyway, the next solar eclipse uh, that's visible in North America will not be until October of 2023. And that's actually a partial. And then April, 2024, there's a total solar eclipse. So we'll have to wait a little bit while a little while for the next one. Fun fact, by the way, a solar eclipse always occurs within about two weeks of a lunar eclipse. 
Um, now, hey, before we talk any more details about solar eclipse, I felt it necessary to put in a little note about safety. Never, ever, ever, ever look directly into a solar eclipse. Because of the intensity of the sun's light, it can cause severe damage to your retina, including permanent blindness. Now, it is possible to view a solar eclipse with the proper protection gear. Now, I'm sure probably you've known this fact since you're about four or five years old. So in case you've been living in a cave, you know, if you've been living in a cave, but you still listen to podcasts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, I just felt it was important to put that in. Well, it, fun fact, weird fact from my doctor days is I have actually treated a patient who went blind due to looking at an eclipse. You know, some people think it's just a myth. Like no, it's, yeah. you gotta take it seriously. It is, yeah. it is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. And back in the day, like back before people knew any better, you would find that, you know, early man and, and people way back in history that, that didn't know any better, they would think that it was the gods being angry or the gods doing right. something. And often, sometimes you would find people that would look into the eclipse and go blind, their intuition, their intuitive abilities would get more, um, I guess they would peak because they didn't have the physical vision. Right. They got to have the spiritual vision, the intuitive right. vision, and they became like spiritual leaders of the village. And I think maybe I'm just referring to an episode of the Vikings or something. I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, I've seen that in, in different, different, right. <laughs> different places. Where eclipses used to be considered bad omens by core yeah. astrologers. And a lot of times it was a bad omen for the king, especially, and usually it would be followed by a prediction of death of the king. Eclipses really don't bring a whole lot of great stuff with them. They are, they're known. So the sun in astrology represents life and energy. So when there is a lunar eclipse, it's be, sorry, a solar eclipse, it's being blocked. So you might feel a lack of vitality and motivation, increased lethargy, but there's also a greater presence of harmful energies and dark spirits because they're able to get through a little bit better. So in some cultures, um, India, Latin America, for example, pregnant women will take precautions during a solar eclipse to avoid having their children born with birth defects. So they take it very seriously. Some say that during uh, a solar eclipse, the sun's rays can severely damage your aura also. And uh, in some cultures, the body is believed to become impure during a solar eclipse. So they say not to bathe during the actual eclipse, but then do so immediately after to <laughs> cleanse away all that crud. Right. If you're wanting to work with eclipse energy, then it is the best time for fasting. So you're more likely to experience digestive issues, according to Ayurvedic principles, doing any protection rituals. So protecting yourself from these dark energies and unwelcome spirits. And it's also best to avoid planning significant events like weddings, business deals. I'm assuming major contract signings during yeah. an eclipse. Kind of like, uh, think of it as like a super mercury retrograde. On steroids. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's very, very similar things that, you know, you should be doing and not doing. So, so now we've gone through all that. What we're going to do is go through the various moon phases and talk a little bit about each one. Okay. The moon travels through different zodiac signs approximately every two and a half days. So as it's transiting from one sign to the next, this little piece of time is called the void of course. So that means that it's between phases, right? It is. So we recently had one not too long ago. It was the new moon that, that we had back in November. And some people said it's a Scorpio new moon. Some people said, no, it's a Libra new moon. And that's because it transited between signs on oh. a single day. Right. Wow. Okay. So there's, it's usually a space of time. That's only about two to maybe eight hours where the moon's considered void of course, okay. where it is heading in from one sign to the other sign. So during a void of course time, when the moon is not fixed in any particular sign yet, it's considered an inauspicious time to start new things. So do not start new things like business projects, relationships, endeavors, because you don't have this full strength of the moon behind you. It hasn't settled into a sign yet. So if you have a witchy calendar or a moon phase calendar, it will definitely show you any void of course time so that you can avoid that little snafu. Wow. 
good to know. I didn't know, yeah. but I'm looking forward to getting my, uh, Yes. My planner and having all that. That could explain a lot of crap that happened in 2020. I mean, <laughs> the whole year was void, of course, in 2020, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> So the first lunar phase is the new moon and our next one we'll be experiencing is on December 14th, 2020 at 10, 17 AM central standard time. You might also see the new moon referred to as a dark moon in some pieces of literature or calendars. And it's really just because if you look up into the night sky, you can't see the moon. It's dark. So hence the name dark moon. Yeah. You know, the moon is always there. Of course, it's just about how the sun's light energy is affecting our view of the moon. And that's what all these phases are. So in this particular phase, the sun's light is projecting on the opposite side from where we can see it. So the moon in this case is directly between the earth and the sun. The side we see does not have the light shining on it. Um, it marks the beginning of the month in the Chinese and Jewish calendars, interestingly enough, but how it might affect us. So 71% of planet earth is covered in water and 60% of our physical bodies are made up of water. So naturally, you know, the gravitational pull of the moon is going to affect us in this case, uh, for this phase, we might feel more self-reflective. There would be a desire to turn inward. We might feel antisocial introverted. might just want to hibernate and shut down and reset. If you want to work with the energy of the new or dark moon, then this is a good time to do a little slow contemplative activity. So setting new goals and intentions or thinking about new beginnings. What do you want to start in your life? So starting new plans, new ideas, starting new spiritual practices, magical alchemy journeys, new and any new endeavor challenges relationships. So you want to if you've got a lot of things you want to do, you just want to narrow your focus down so that you can prioritize what is the most important thing to start. A lot of people also might use this time to cleanse your energy, your space and your tools like crystals. It's a time for release. Like it's cause it's like a blank slate, right? So it's time for clearing out all the stuff, then basking in that feeling of a clean, fresh start. So the metaphor I like to use is like it, after the holidays are over, you've had relatives visiting your house is a mess. You've got stuff everywhere. You decide you take a day or a weekend and you take down the tree and you clean your house and you do the laundry and you do all the dusting and it's just fresh and back to normal. It's a fresh slate, clean slate. That's kind of what this is like. So interestingly enough, the lunar phase you were born under can contribute to your personality, just like the zodiac signs in your natal birth chart. So to figure out what moon phase you were born under, you can check out a moon calculator and we've got a resource for you at mooncalendar.astro-seek.com. And that will be in our show notes as well. If you were born under a new moon, then that means you are creative, adventurous, and impulsive. Next, we have the waxing crescent moon. This begins three days after the new moon. So I always get confused between waxing and waning. Like, you know, like they're two very, well, really, they're only different by one letter. What waxing means is it's the illuminated area of the moon is increasing. It's on the rise. How this might affect us is the moon begins moving closer to the sun. So we may have more energy and motivation as the moon's energy is on the rise. Also, it's been proven that estrogen levels in women begin to increase during this time. If you're going to work with the magic of this time, then it's great for manifestation and abundance spells, focusing on long-term material gain, like new jobs, money, education. It's good for career and money spells as well. And if you want to work toward any goals or intentions that you set in the new moon phase, keep that momentum going here. And if you were born under a waxing crescent, that means that you are ambitious, productive, and averse to risks. Okay. So the next phase we have is the first quarter moon. It's also known as the half moon or the waxing quarter moon. Uh, our next one we have is December 31st. This one begins seven days after the new moon. Now how the first quarter moon might affect us. We may begin to feel some resistance and blocks to the goals we've been working on. So it's time to make decisions and take action on those decisions. Just remember to be flexible because things might be coming at you from left field, things that you weren't expecting. 
I think this is really a phase to sort of keep the faith. It's, it's, you haven't seen things materialize necessarily in your life yet, but you got to keep chugging and keep plugging along to make those things happen. So for for this time, you want to work is work on personal growth, focus there, focus on your dreams and goals coming to fruition. Think about them. If you've planted those seeds, you're caring for them, you're nurturing them. You want to stay positive and motivated and keep taking action on manifesting your dreams. So you want to transmute or transform any weaknesses during this time. So if you need to brush up on any skills, this is a great time to do that as well. So it's good for spells that deal with confidence, self-esteem, and self-love. It's a great time to build your knowledge, build your skills. What do you need to improve on? What action steps can you take to get yourself that much closer to your dream? If you want to open your connection to spirit and grow spiritually or develop your psychic abilities, it's also an amazing time for that. And increasing your finances, fertility, health, desire, and love. So it's kind of that whole abundance category. Plus, it's a great time for beauty and health treatment. So if you want that Botox, get those eyelash extensions, buy a new wardrobe, then this is the phase that's going to help you out the most. I'll definitely have to keep that in mind for right? future uh, laser treatments. <laughs> <laughs> We're on camera a lot, you and I. So those lash extensions, they look awfully attractive. <laughs> I don't think I could go through with it, but they are amazing on camera. If you're born under a first quarter moon, it means you are capable, action oriented, and impatient. The next phase in line is the waxing gibbous moon. This begins on the 10th day after the new moon. So now for me, naturally being curious and Aquarian, um, I'm like gibbous. What the heck is gibbous? Like I've heard it since I was little, but like gibbous, what a weird, weird word. So naturally I had to look it up. So I'm going to share my findings with you. It sounds like giblet. You know what? It reminds me of gibbon, like the gibbons, (laughs) like the monkeys, you know, like. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyway, so it's from the Latin word gibbosis, and that means hump. So in the Oxford Dictionary, the word gibbous is defined as relating to the moon, having the observable illuminated part greater than a semicircle and less than a circle. So a semicircle being a half circle, basically more than a quarter moon and less than a full moon, which is exactly what we're talking about here. So how it might affect us. At this point, it's time to reevaluate. You might need to change course or refine the process of what you're working on. And also it's a time that you need to consider making some sacrifices in order to get the best results. So you might have to get rid of some things that really are important to you, but in the long run, you know, those are going to help your long-term goal. And in order to sort of help you on that path to goals, meditation and doing any short-term spell work is great here. Plus doing candle magic, which personally, I love to do candle magic. I'm starting to get back into it a little bit more. Uh, focus Future on grow- episode alert. By Future the way. episodes. Whoop, so. whoop. <laughs> um, focus on growing the intentions that you set at the new moon. So still don't lose the faith you know, keep adding your magic into that intention and be patient with your goals and your dreams developing that you're going to see them. Keep the faith. If you were born under a waxing gibbous, that means you are calming, nurturing, and maybe a perfectionist. Sounds like Virgo energy to me. So our next phase is the full moon. So this marks the halfway point, I guess. Uh, The last full moon, again, was November 30th, but our next one is going to be December 29th and at 928 p.m. CST. Uh, That means that we are able to see the moon fully illuminated by the sun. And uh, this phase is 14 days after the new moon. So again, halfway through the cycle. Now, how a full moon affects us. It's interesting because, you know, we have these little notes here and there about all the phases. And this one about the full moon is pretty long because it does affects us in so many ways. Again, really? that gravitational pull, it's, you know, tidal forces, they're at maximum strength. And so are the moon's energies. So spiritually, things begin to come into focus, you might see clarity, it's a time to assess and make adjustments. And Again, because the energy is at its peak of intensity, our emotions may also be more intense. So that means you might be more romantic, also means you might be a lot more anxious, and you're more likely to exaggerate in a disagreement. There could be a lot of instability because of all that crazy moon energy. 
if you are a water sign in the Zodiac, so Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you may actually feel yes. the new moon energy stronger than some of the other Zodiacs do. Uh, as your emotions may be more intense, that of course could include romance. After all, full moon is known to increase romance, right? It's, I mean, what's more romantic than kissing somebody under right. a full moon? Conversely, on the full moon, some officers, you know, some people in... Uh, the police force believe that more violence occurs. And there was actually a study done by the U.S. National Criminal Justice Reference Service um, that showed that during a full moon, there was an increase in homicides and aggravated assault. That was a five-year study. So, I mean, it's not just, you know, a fly-by-night kind of thing. So every nurse will tell you oh, yeah. that when it's a full moon, the ER is full of interesting and crazy, often psychotic people, right? Yeah. So if you've ever heard of the, the word lunacy, which means crazy or psychotic, that comes from lunar, the moon. So it's backing up that correlation between there are increased episodes of violence between um, cycles around a full moon cycle. The word honeymoon is also having to do with a moon cycle and that newlyweds were um, sequestered with honey cakes and sweet cakes from one moon cycle to the other. So that's why it's a honeymoon and, but little fun stuff. So there's a little love and a little violence that's going to yeah, happen. It's, during it's this a time. cray cray time for sure. Uh, now also along those lines, uh, the full moon has been shown to interrupt sleep. Um, there's a medical journal called Current Biology, and in 2013, they did a study where they found that people's ability to fall asleep was decreased by 30% during a full moon. And some people think, oh, it's because it's lighter, but actually they removed that from the equation and they measured REM and melatonin levels, and they found that that this was the case. So it's pretty interesting. Um, it's thought by some that the electromagnetic effect of the moon decreases melatonin levels of the blood. And those have actually been shown uh, by measurements in animals like birds and fish. Also during a full moon, you will see increased dream activity is fairly common. And that includes nightmares, of course. So here's just a little sidebar, some interesting facts about the full moon, the reproduction of coral reefs, like for example, the great barrier reef in Australia, this depends on moon cycles because the release of eggs and sperm always occurs near or on a full moon. Also cows have been found to give birth more often near or during a full moon and lion attacks occur more often just after a full moon, because that's when the night becomes darker and it's easier for them to hide and from and sneak up on prey. So the full moon doesn't just affect people. It also affects animals. And if you're going to work with full moon energy, it's amazing for enhancing your creativity and your psychic gifts, especially clairvoyancy, which is clear seeing. You can use dreams to manifest your desires, make contact with the spirit realm, lucid dreaming, or astral projection. It's also a good time to increase your social interactions and relationships. So the moon may make you magnetic or extra social and increase your activities in that way. You right. may... So so like we talked about with the new moon, when you kind of just want to be introvert and like, you know, hide and right. curl up on your couch, this is the opposite end of the spectrum is the opposite side of the cycle. You want to get out there and put yourself out mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. And that includes taking risks, risks or actions to advance your goals, enhance connection to the spiritual world. So think about it as a time for, like you said, putting yourself out there, even to the spirit world networking relationships, go for it. It's a great time to work with any rituals or spells with abundance, protection, confidence, love, and wisdom. You can also use this as a time to cut out anything that you don't want in for, in terms of a release. So you can clean your altar tools. You can also do something called moon bathing. And this is healthy. I think for all of us, this is get outside and walk in the moonlight, mm -hmm. sit on your patio in the moonlight, just soak that in in charging your crystals. So if you've got some crystals and you're in a safe place, you can put them outside in the yard, in the grass, on the patio. If that's not an option for you, you can put them by a window that's going to get moonlight. 
you know, through shining through the window. So you put your crystals on the inside on the windowsill and that can charge it with moon energy. Even if that's not a possibility for you, even if they can't see or bask in that moonlight, they will still benefit from being charged by the moon. But you want to make sure that you set an intention to do so. Don't just leave them there and say, oh, this is fine. Do some a little ritual or something that helps to bring that energy in. And you know, if you're missing some, the fairies mm. look at that stuff like, Ooh, happen, yeah. sh- like shiny stuff and you might not have as many on the way in as you put out. So just keep that in mind as well. And you can also make moon water. So if you're going to make some moon water and moon water is good to charge it with your intention. So just like you would charge your crystals, if you're trying to attract abundance or love, you set that intention and you want to take an empty jar and sage it or clear it, fill it with spring water, filtered water, and then you sit it outside so that it can absorb the moonlight. And then you want to bring it back in before sunrise. So you don't want to let the sun touch it. This is moon water. Then you can add that moon water to your ritual baths. You can add it to um, any candle magic. You can add it to your drinking water and you're just taking in that charged essence. So I recently made a moon, a batch of moon water for the blue moon because I wanted, it was the Samhain blue moon and I really wanted that stuff. And I've been putting it a little bit in my drinking water. Nice. Now, the thing is we talked about eclipses earlier. It's really not a great idea to charge your crystals or make moon water during an eclipse because the eclipses are considered chaotic energy right? and you, and you don't really want to charge your energy tools with chaos unless you're into that sort of thing. But that's, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, but most of us aren't, you know, we <laughs> like a little piece. So that's how you can make some moon water and when you should not make moon water. Yeah. And then also the harvest moon each September, that's the time when farmers are harvesting their crops. So it's the best time to harvest and reap what you've been building. Right. And that, that corresponds to the pagan uh, Maybon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Around that time as well. So if you were born under a full moon, lucky you, you are emotional, sensitive, and conflicted. So the next phase we're talking about here is the waning gibbous moon. There's that funny word again. Um, this starts the third to seventh day after the full moon. Waning now means that the illuminated area of the moon is decreasing. This is when the energy is going from its full phase and it's starting to wane. It's starting to go down. Now, how this phase might affect us. This is when progesterone begins to increase during this cycle, uh, preparing the room for conception. You are probably starting to feel the benefits of the hard work you've been doing so far. The results are beginning to become apparent. So it's a really good time for things like gratitude, showing gratitude, doing a gratitude practice, also giving and sharing. If you want to work with the energy of this moon, it's similar to that full moon energy and that you want to, what do you want to cut out? What do you want to clear? So you can banish toxic relationships or you can do psychic development. And in that, it would be like, what, what's blocking you from your psychic development? right? If you want to let go of those blocks, but it's banishing bad habits, addictions, anxiety, weakness, and limitations. This is a great time for doing shadow work or overcoming obstacles in your path. If you're born under a waning gibbous, like like, me, like Jen, (laughs) you are pensive, analytical, and critical. Well, that's not me at all. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that sounds like me. (laughs) So our next phase is the third quarter moon. It's also known as the last quarter or the waning quarter. And our next one will be January 6th. And this begins on the seventh to 10th day after a full moon. Now the third quarter moon might affect us because this is when we're you know, we're about three quarters of the way through, right? So we're beginning to prepare to let go and release. So think about what you need to shed. It's a great time to do meditation, increasing your inner awareness. Look within for answers. Again, what do you need to shed? What's holding you back? It's a time of rest and renewal. So you do want to start slowing down a little bit and removing yourself from toxic relationships or situations. If you're born under a last quarter moon, then that means you're loyal, sentimental, and attached. 
And then our next phase, we have the waning crescent moon, and this occurs from the 10th day after the full moon until the new moon. And how this phase might affect us is we may feel tired. It's time to rest and relax. We've done, a, we've been through a lot, right? This is, you know, the, the, the phases are almost over. This moon cycle is almost old, yeah. over. So we might be feeling a lack of motivation. A lot of times people have a lower sex drive. It's also uh, tends to be sometimes more likelihood for depression. It's time for surrender and acceptance. And then also though contemplation for what you have accomplished and maybe think, you know, about what you want to get started on when the new cycle starts. And because it is a slower, restful time, you do want to work with your magic or your intentions for closure, reflection, understanding your lessons. It is best not to start new projects at this phase, any new plans or any big decisions, if you can wait a little bit on that. And you want to perform rituals instead of gratitude, thanks, uh, thank you, gratitude, relaxation, just being aware of in the present moment where you are. It's a great time to cleanse your home physically and energetically. And if you are born under the waning crescent, like myself, this is my sign, you are imaginative, unconventional, and isolated. Can I get a what, what? That's totally me. <laughs> Well, hey guys, so that's it for our moon phases. We hope you learned a lot. We always love bringing information to you. So thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. This has been Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen. Find full episodes on your favorite listening platform or visit spiritualbasicspodcast.com.